Um, all right, so in this equation, I have y minus 4 squared divided by 9 minus x plus 3 squared divided by 25. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we always have a squared minus b squared in our formula, right? So we're, they're going to ask us to graph this. But remember, when we were talking about hyperbolas, it's always a squared minus b squared equals 1. And since this case, I have the y over my a, and the x is over my a, or my b, what type of hyperbola do I have? Do I have a hyperbola that's going to be opening transverse actions vertical, or is the transverse action going to be horizontal? Vertical, right? So it's going to be a little bit different than what we've done before. So now I know that my transverse axis is going to be vertical. So let's go with what we know. We know that our center is obviously going to be h comma k, right? If it was for horizontal, the x would be over the a. The vertical is when the y is over the a. Got it? OK. The vertical, this would be vertical. All right, sorry, it is vertical. It would be horizontal if the x and y's were switched. Whenever you have the x, remember, it's always a squared minus b squared for a hyperbola, right? It's not like an ellipse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all, remember, everybody gets it confused with an ellipse saying, oh, that's a and that's b. No. It's always a squared minus b squared. Okay? So we have centers hk. So in this case, it's negative 3. Negative 3, comma 4. Right? You got to make sure you just remember where the h is and where the k, where the k is. Right? Because remember, it's opposite. It's x opposite of h. This says x opposite of h. So you got to say, what is the opposite of your 3, which would be negative 3? When did you change it to When did you say it was opposite? Guys, we've, all, we've been using this rule since the beginning. When did you say this it? formula, the center, look it. The center is h comma k. OK? Now watch. Watch what I'm doing. Pay attention, please. This y minus k. What is the value of k in the parentheses? Positive. So all I'm saying is y minus k. k is k. So when I say what is k, if I say h comma k, so if I do y minus 3, that means k is equal to 3. Do you guys see that? It's not negative 3. It's 3. All right, so let's look at it this way. So a positive y minus a negative 3, right? So that, make, that looks like y plus 3, though, right? But that's why we say, so when I say, when I say y plus 3, that's why it's negative 3, right? Because the actual value for your k is negative 3. If you just want to go through the simple terms, just remember that it's just always opposite. If here's your formula, your center is h comma k, so it's always going to be the opposite terms. All right? All right, so we have our center is negative 3 comma 4. Now we know our a, a squared equals 9, and b squared equals 25. Wendy, I shouldn't be able to hear that. a squared is 81. Huh? a squared is 9. Oh, okay. Right? Your a squared is right up there. So now, if I, can, if I know a squared is 9, then I know a equals 3 and b equals 5. So remember, we're going to be trying graphing this, right? Yes? OK. So to finish up graphing this, let's just plot what we know right now, and then we'll get to the rest of it. So the first thing I can do is plot the center, which is negative 3, 4. So I go over negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's my center. Now, we know our A. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, set, we determine, is this going to be horizontal or vertical? vertical? Vertical, right? So my vertices, are they going to be above and below my center or to the left and right? Above. above and below. So we know my A is 3, so I'm just going to go up 3 units. 1, 2, 3. And then I need to go down 3 units. 1, 2, 3. 
Does that make sense? Those are my two vertices. The distance, remember the distance from the center to the vertices is 3, or is A. Well, A is 3, so I just go up and down 3. Now, the next thing is, though, we need to find the focus. We're not really concerned with B. B tells us our co-vertices, which aren't a part of our graph. So we need to figure out what C is. So remember, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That's for a hyperbola. So C squared, we don't know what it is, equals A squared, which is 9, plus B squared, which is 25. So C squared equals the square or equals 34. Square root, square root, C equals approximately what? Five points. Square root of 34 approximately is five points or five point seven eight. Square root of 34. Five point eight. So we're just going to approximate 5.8 because I want to sketch the graph. So instead of my center, now I'm going to go up and down 5.8, right? Because remember, the foci then the vertices in the center are all on the same transverse axis. So now I go up roughly 5.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.8. Then I go down 5.8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0.8 is roughly somewhere around there. All right. So I, now I know my graph is going to open up and it's going to open down because my points all lie on this transverse axis. However, remember we have asymptotes, right? Right. So a hyperbola has our asymptotes. So remember, since we have a vertical, we know that the equation for asymptotes of a vertical equation is y equals k plus or minus a over b times x minus h. For a horizontal, it's b over a. For a vertical, it's a over b. All right. So therefore, you have y equals k, which in this case is 4, plus or minus our a, which is 3, over our b, times our x minus our h, which is negative 3. So it'd be plus 3. Are you serious? I don't want to graph these. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these separately. y equals 4 plus or minus. All right, sorry, let's do, let's do these separately. Plus 3 fifths x plus 9 over 5. And then let's do y equals 4 minus 3 fifths x Um, excuse me, excuse me. Hold on, we're not done yet. So you need to graph these two asymptotes, all right? So the last thing, guys, if you do, if you get those to be the same, you're going to have to graph the line y equals 3 fifths x. Get these to be common denominators, which would be plus 29 over 5, which you're going to have to approximate. And then here, you're going to have to get these to be common denominators 20, so that's going to be 11. So y equals 3 fifths x minus 11 over 5. And then I'm just going to kind of shorten this up because I know we are running out of time. Just to let you guys know, your asymptotes are going to look something like this. They're where your graph is going to approach. So what you can see is the shape of the graph is going to be something like this. That's my transverse axis. That's not really part of the graph. I just graphed it so you guys can see that's where everything lies. So you have your focus, your vertice, your asymptotes, your center, your, fo your, vertice, your vertice, and your foci. All right? And if you guys didn't already